My name is Stephen Hill. I teach in the Political Science Department and the course name is Introduction to World Politics, Polls 122. If we can see how two prisoners react with one another, as we're going to look at today, perhaps we can compare that to how states behave in world politics and then we can see how international institutions work. Well, the course has, I think, two objectives. I, probably all of us who teach general education introductory classes have these objectives, which is firstly to introduce students to the discipline of political science, especially world politics, which is the sub-discipline that, that I'm in of, of political science, and also to improve students' uh, communication skills, critical thinking skills, and analytical skills. So I'm trying to do two things. One is to introduce students to how to study world politics, that there are big debates in our field about uh, how we can explain how the world works and if they can engage in that debate I'm happy by the end of the, the semester I'm hoping they realize that, that there are these three or four uh, different ways of trying to explain how the world works and that if you don't decide and if you don't challenge yourself to decide how the world works then you can't choose a foreign policy for example for the United States that's going to achieve your goals and objectives. So it's a really important aspect of, of political science and I think to be an informed citizen and a global citizen requires that you, you grapple with this question. How does the world work? Why do states act as they do? Why does the United States behave as it does? If I can explain that then I can build a foreign policy that will achieve our goals. We wake up every day counting each other's weapons and armaments and troop deployments. It's a horrible situation because the Cold War better than unilateral disarmament and death? That's the question. So if they by taking this course recognize that world politics is really interesting I want to get engaged because I realize now that if I if that the United States has a foreign policy that is based on an explanation of world politics. Our leaders have to have an idea about how the world works and they're basing their policies on those ideas. And if they're not engaging in that discussion, then who do they vote for? If you can't identify the theoretical assumptions of the candidates, then you don't know who to vote for because you can't make sense of their foreign policies. I compare it, for example, to to a physician or a doctor that, that says, well, I'm, I'm going to write you a prescription, but I've got no idea what's causing your disease. So I hope this prescription works. You know, And if you were to say that, you would leave and, and find another doctor. You want your doctor to say, look, we've investigated the cause of your problem. You may have seen a number of doctors before, and they've given you the wrong prescription, but I've identified what the cause of your problem is, and I'm choosing this, this medicine because I know it will help ameliorate or cure the problem that you have. So we have the same situation in world politics. We have competing, uh, uh, competing approaches to explaining what the problem is and then of course because of that we have uh, differing uh, uh, prescriptions as to what the answer to those problems are. So you know I'm hoping my students will by, by taking the course become familiar with the different approaches but really engage with with world politics and US foreign policy and ask, okay, you know, what's the connection between the two? If, if I want the US to behave in a certain way in world politics, why is that? And I can only answer that question if I've engaged in, in that theoretical debate.